everyone welcome back to another jazz drummer q-tip of the week my name of course is quincy davis if you're new thank you so much for tuning in today we are going to be talking about four effective ways of improving your ride feel this is one of my favorite topics i haven't done a ride symbol video in a while so if you're ready then i'm ready if you guys are ready you gotta let me know okay and I, on the count of three i want you to say let's go with me ready one two three let's go all right here we are so i'm gonna try to talk and play at the same time um so the reason why you want to practice all these different four ways that I'm going to show you is to be as expressive with your ride symbol time and feel as possible. You don't want to feel locked in to only playing it one way, okay? So these four ways are going to help you open up, get freer, and more expressive with your time play. So the first thing that you want to do, or the first way or method that you can practice it's just practicing quarter notes, like so, like so, like so. You can practice it just with the ride cymbal or with the hi-hat. And by the way, I'm, I'm practicing along with the, a, bass, blaze, a bass play along <laughs> um, that I created so that we could actually work on time with a bass player, a live bass player. So you gotta check it out, the link will be down below. And this will help you understand how to, how to treat the quarter note depending on the tempo. I recommend doing this at all tempos, okay? Just play quarter notes. And you wanna try to make sure that all the quarter notes are equal, equal in value and also volume, okay? So just start with the ride symbol. One, two, one, two, three, four. And I know it seems really simple, but as the title suggests, it's very effective. And you do this at different tempos. I'm not doing it very well right now, but if you do this at different tempos, it'll really help you get a sense of where that quarter note is because quarter note is king. Remember that quarter note is king. And that's exactly what the bass player, which you can hear, is playing. So if you can really create a strong relationship with the quarter note, that's gonna help your overall feel, okay? And then you'll be able to dance around it better, okay? So now let's just see what it sounds like if we add the ride cymbal, hi-hat, and snare drum. And we're gonna try to create a feel, but not with the ride cymbal beat or with any triplets in the ride cymbal. It's gonna be more through my comping. Okay, here we go, let's see what happens. One, two, Strong two and four. And it's all those, those upbeat placements that are creating the feel for better or for worse. Because I could, I could do that. Obviously that doesn't feel very swinging. But if I go like this. Ah, you feel the difference? So this exercise really forces you to pay attention to the placement of your comping notes and the placement and consistency of your ride cymbal quarter notes. All right, so this next exercise is all about the shuffle and creating a shuffle feel, but not on the snare drum, as maybe most of you are used to, on the ride cymbal, okay? And I'll show you what that's gonna sound like, just the ride cymbal. One, two, uh, 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 uh. All right, and I'm kind of using, I'm using kind of a push-pull technique. I, I guess that's what you call it. I'm not really into all these different techniques, although the molar technique is, is, uh, is great. I use that um, consciously. But um, I'm just using my fingers to create that, that bouncing, you know, that sense of bounce and um, that buoyancy with the eighth note, the shuffle. And the reason why this is really great 
is because of the fourth way that I want you to practice the ride some, and we're going to get to that. So I'll tell you exactly why that's so great when we get there. But for now, I, I just want you to practice doing this. And again, practice this at different temples. Right now, I'm just doing it at one temple. But this is great at all temples, although fast temples doing this is really difficult. So maybe omit this from the uh, up-tempo ride cymbal practice. Here we go. So I'll just start with the ride cymbal. And then I'm going to add the hi-hat. All right, here's the hi-hat. You feel it? I'm going to add the, the snare drum. You can even double the shuffle. That might be a little fast for many of you. And that's OK. OK? Okay, so essentially why we're doing this is, one, to make sure that there's a sense of bounce in the ride cymbal, okay? A lot of times I hear ride cymbal beats and they're kind of stiff and it's basically because they're not allowing that bounce to happen off, off the eighth note. Uh, they're afraid of getting away from ding, 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 ding. So it sounds very stiff and they're not using any fingers, though, I don't want you to get into the habit of only using fingers. This is not a, a finger only technique uh, or just playing the ride cymbal should not only be uh, fingers nor should it only be wrist. It should be a combination of both. Depending on the tempo, you're going to use one more than the other. If that makes sense. Okay. So uh, again, I'm going to get into why this is really important, but work on this technique in the ride cymbal because it's gonna open up a lot as far as creating a stronger feel and being more expressive while you play time. So I'm offering 15% off of my Bebop Phrase ebook that you gotta check out if you haven't already done so. It's just gonna help you learn more about Bebop drumming, how to apply rudiments, phrasing, just build your overall language. So definitely check that out. Okay. I bet you thought I was gonna omit this. No, you gotta work on the ride symbol. We'll call it the pattern, okay? Ride symbol pattern. Because you have to know what that feels like. That's just the classic feel that if you're not comfortable doing, then your ride symbol feel overall is gonna, it's, there's, there's always gonna be something missing. And sometimes, depending on the style, if it's, if it's more of a traditional style, this is kind of what it calls for, especially if it's swing error, right? You want it to be pretty straight ahead. And this is the best way of creating that kind of a feel. Okay, so work on this at all different temples. And I would encourage you, if you're, if you're observing my technique, I'm really trying to stay relaxed. I'm lifting, always lifting on two and four, or right before two and four. There's always this, this kind of motion happening. And what that does is it allows all the notes to come out clearly if without with less effort. If I don't lift, then all those notes are, one, it's gonna two, be much one, tougher two, three, four. for them to come out and I'm gonna have to work a lot harder. Okay, so make sure you're lifting. And try to go for more of a classic triplet. Instead of a more of a 16th note, here's a 16th note. Here's a, a quarter note emphasize, emphasize beat. That feels awkward. <laughs> and then here's something uh, inverted accent where I'm, I'm playing the off beat. Right, or the, I'm emphasizing the, the triplet, the last triplet of two and four. So it sounds like this. All right, we could do that. We could also play it more straight. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, and I'm not saying not, those aren't good. I definitely think you should explore them um, when you're when you're ready, but the classic ride cymbal pattern 
one, two, a three, four, a one, two, a three, four should be worked on and practiced till you're blue in the face. So you're really comfortable with that. But you're not going to only be playing that. Just keep that in mind when you're when you're playing on the gig. So I'll add the hi hat now. And I'm really trying to lock two and four in my right hand. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, with the left foot, with a hi hat. I'm just trying to make sure that that is on lock. Because if it's not, it starts to feel like that. And if you want to take it a step further, add your feathering. Your feathering quarter notes should align with everything, both your right hand and your left foot. But if, it, if it's like this, or if, it's, if you're playing it too loud, right, it can throw the whole groove off. So if, if you're playing the, if you're feathering, and it's throwing everything off, one, it is two, not, one, two, as three, I count four. myself back into the top, um, it is not worth it, okay? I would say keep on practicing feathering, but omit it when you're on a gig if it's messing you up, because it's not worth it. You can still swing without feathering, although, it's not gonna have that same kind of depth, but that's cool. Do what you can do, not what you can. Okay, uh, so now we're gonna practice that uh, ride cymbal pattern with comping. And we're not gonna change it, by the way. Try to stay as relaxed as possible. All right. In my comping, I'm really paying attention to where my comp notes are falling, especially those offbeats. Bop, bop. If it's too straight, or if it's just not swinging, it's gonna stand up. It's gonna throw the whole groove off. Bop, bop, bop. Bop, bop, bop. You feel it? So definitely practice that, and if you do that, then you'll be ready for the very last step that I would encourage you to practice. All right, so this last approach to improve your ride cymbal feel embodies all three of the ways that I showed you in this video up to this point. One, okay? two, one, As two, I count three, back four. into the top. Um, and this is the approach that's gonna allow you to open up and be more expressive with your time and feel. And I'll show you exactly what, I, what that is. Here we go. One, two, uh, uh, uh. Dang. You got it? What am I doing? Am I playing one pattern or one beat the whole time? Or is it ever changing? Exactly, it's ever changing. Depending on what I'm feeling. Okay, so sometimes you hear the shuffle. Sometimes you just hear a quarter note. Sometimes you hear ride cymbal, the whole ride cymbal pattern. And then, and that leads to more of a kind of a varied ride cymbal feel. The common denominator though, is that they're all, whatever I play, it should all, it should always emphasize or um, accentuate, that's the word, accentuate the quarter note, okay? But if you don't know where that quarter note is, step one, then you're just gonna be kind of playing whatever and it's not gonna feel that great, okay? so. Um, what will help you be more expressive or understand how to open up your ride cymbal? Because I think many of you think you, you can only play ding, 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 ding. So what I want you to do, and I've done this in another video, is sing your ride cymbal, okay? 
ding ding it ain't dig 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 it ain't Add your hi hat, ding it, dig it in, dig it, dig it in, ding, dig it, dig it in, ding, dig it, dig it, dig it in, ding, 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 why not? Ding, 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 dig it, dig it in, dig it, dig it in, dig it, dig it, dig it in, dig it in, dig it in, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, right? And so suddenly now, it's like a snowflake, right? No snowflake is created the same. They're all different, and that's the same here. So if you learn to do this, then nobody else is going to play what you're playing or play the pattern that you're, because you're not playing a pattern. You're just playing what you feel, okay? And the last thing that you should work on after you really get comfortable with that is your left hand, right? This approach um, really kind of beckons your left hand to also be involved in how you're playing the ride cymbal and the dance that's going on. So listen to the left hand and how it gets involved. Right, so whatever I play here, it's being accentuated in the left hand in some way, shape, or form, right? Often, if I'm playing one, if I'm playing that like a shuffle, then I'll I'll catch some of those upbeats. Right? And this is not a rule. This is not a hard, fast, set rule. Um, it's just an approach that. When you're playing off beats or you're playing um, kind of some kind of shuffle in the ride cymbal, you can catch it in the in the left hand, right? And I'll play it slower so you can see what that sounds like. But make sure you keep the ride cymbal on top. Right? Does that make sense? I hope so. And I guarantee if you work on all of these steps, these approaches, it's going to open up your ride cymbal feel, sound, groove, um, and you're just going to start to feel like you're, you're actually intending every note that you're playing instead of just phoning it in and being in cruise control because you definitely don't want to be in cruise control playing the ride cymbal. Um, this represents life. And the more life you had in your, in your ride cymbal, the more life you're going to breathe, so to speak, into the music. So have fun with that. Uh, work on it diligently. Work hard as always. But what? Practice smart. Practice hard. Practice smart. Practice hard. Practice smart. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.